What's up guys, this is Tampa Tech. Uh, one of you guys complained about my um, my video being too long and this video is going to be shorter and also my last video rendered in 480p, I didn't realize it until after I uploaded it. This uh, is going to be rendered at 1080p, 60 frames per second, so click on that gear below and change your resolution. Enjoy the shorter version where I don't talk about my tool so much, but I do highly recommend this solder iron, solder iron for you English majors. All right, first thing you want to do is heat up your solder iron and you want to clean the tip with a wet sponge. Then after you clean it, you want to tin the tip with a coating of solder, just like that. So let's go ahead and solder some wires together. So you want to cut it right here. I want to... Let's go ahead and Get some wire together and you want to twist it right here. And I'm going to show you how to solder with flux. So you want to heat up the wire right here and then add some solder. See how it's not absorbing? Well, this is where flux comes into play. So let's go ahead and dip it into the flux. And if you're having a problem where it's not absorbing onto the wire, the solder, you want to dip it in flux and it's going to work amazing. And so what you want to do is let's just, you just twist it on. You get it like that. and then heat up the wire, and then they'll bond together that way. And once you heat up the wire, you wanna add the solder to the wire, not to the solder iron. And then you can wrap it up with electric tape or, you know, the heat shrink tube. Clean it off with a wet sponge. I'm going to take out one of these capacitors. And let's go ahead and take out this one right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and heat it up like that. Once the solder liquefies, you want to use the plunger. Put it over here on top and suck out the solder, just like that. See, see how the solder went away a little bit? And then I wanna clean it up with the desoldering braid. So I use both actually. So I use the solder sucker to get out the most majority of the solder and then I clean it up with the desoldering braid. Just like that. Don't overheat the soldering pad because it can detach from the board and that's not a good thing. So don't overheat it. A 40 watt solder iron is should be fine. And then cover it. There you go, that's a good one. So that's what it looks like, that's pretty good. So I don't think I need to clean it up with the desoldering braid. As long as the pin wiggles and breaks free from the board, you're good. But it looks like it's still attached to the soldering pad. All right. Now, if it's not working, it might need more flux. And so by dipping it in here and getting more flux on there, it should absorb that remaining solder out. You don't want to breathe the stuff in. Can't be too healthy. All right, and then flip it over. All right, and then should wiggle right out. Just like that, see? Pretty good. And then the stripe size, the negative of the capacitor, 
and the other side is the positive. So when you put it back in, make sure you put it back in according to that dot. Make sure you put it back in according to that dot. There should be like a stripe or a dot on that side. And then you want to line it up with the stripe side of the capacitor. So now let's go ahead and solder that back up. And you want to heat up where the pin and the pad is, right at that solder joint. And it takes about 10 seconds for this solder iron to heat up. Just be patient. You don't want to rush anything. And just a little goes a long way. That's all you need. You don't want to put globs of globs of solder on. Then they actually can overflow and touch other solder pads. And that's when you short stuff out. Let's go ahead and solder it back up. This one, right where the pin and the pad is, right at that joint. And that's it, that's all you need. Now for bigger ones right here, you might want to use uh, a higher wattage solder iron. I use usually like a 50 watt solder iron for bigger solder joints. This, this, this soldering iron, even though it's rechargeable, I guess if it's, it's equivalent to maybe a 30 or 40 watt solder iron. But see how it takes a little bit longer to get this one out? This is where I would use a 50 watt solder iron. Let's go ahead and put that solder sucker over it. And you want the best suction as possible. Cover it completely. And there you go. That worked out pretty decent. And let's go ahead and get the remainder out. This really works great for like, you know, desoldering capacitors, smaller capacitors but really use electrical 50 watt solder iron for bigger pins. Or adjustable solder iron works great. All right, so let's go ahead and solder, the, solder that back up. And a little goes a long way. There you go. And then that's it. You should have a nice even amount of solder all the way around. For ICs, you can do is use a heat gun, heat it up with a heat gun, and use tweezers to pull it right out. I did a video how to do that. That's a totally different video. So if this video was informative, give me a big thumbs up. And share this video to anyone this video may interest and subscribe to Tampa Tech for more how-to videos like this one.